Time to do my UFC 218 Holloway versus Aldo 2 predictions. Of course, it was going to be Holloway taking on Frankie Edgar, but uh, he got injured. I'm not really sure what happened, but he's going to be sidelined for a while. So now we're getting a rematch of uh, the last uh, championship bout we saw in this particular division. So the question here is, it's very straightforward. Uh, what can Jose Aldo do in this fight that he didn't do in the last fight to defeat Max Holloway? And I think if you go back and you watch that fight from earlier this year, I mean, Max Holloway just outclassed him in every department. He just beat him striking. He beat him, you know, there was a very short amount of the fight on the ground, but even there, Max Holloway won. He's just a faster fighter. He's a more accurate fighter. He's better at closing the gap. He has a better range. You know, it's just one of those things where I just don't think Aldo really has much of a chance in this one, unless there's like some major, major variable going on here that we really can't quantify. Uh, if Max Holloway goes in this fight and he's actually like a well-trained and his cardio is good and he's out there to win this fight and finish it, he's going to do it. I mean, you know, anything less than him like going in this fight like high on crack, I think there's no excuse for him to not win. So, you know, you can look at the stats. These guys have already fought before, so numbers go out the window. It was just, you know, about as... Uh, you know, of a disadvantage for us, I can think of because Aldo just looked three steps behind Holloway at everything he did. And the question here is, will we get a different result? And that means for that to happen, either Jose Aldo will have had to have made some major, major steps up in his games in that last spot, in tandem with Max Holloway dropping her step behind him, which I don't really see that being the case because he has a very good camp. Uh, traditionally, he's trained very well and hard. And... Uh, I don't really know what to say. I think it's going to be the second verse, same as the first. I got Max Holloway winning this fight. I think he goes in there and he yeah, defeats Jose Aldo by third round, TKO, ground and pound. Hey, history repeats itself. All right, moving along on the main card, we've got Alistair Overeem taking on Francis Naganu. Uh, boy, this should be pretty entertaining. Um, Look at the stats here. They're pretty similar uh yeah they're actually very very similar the only uh, thing is uh, the takedown accuracy there at the bottom and the takedown average so i'm gonna go out here on a limb and say that overeem is the better wrestler but i don't think there's gonna be a whole lot of grappling in this one i think it's gonna be bam 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 first person to get clipped goes down and this spot's over and uh you know alistair give him credit he's still a very very good fighter i think he's one of those guys who's never really more than Two fights away, more than likely, from a heavyweight championship shot. But I've been very impressed by what Francis has been doing as of late. I think he's a guy who maybe isn't uh, as impactful as a guy like Derek Lewis, but he's fast. He's got some speed. And uh, when you have guys who are very, very powerful, who have very similar range, um, yeah, you go with the faster guy. And then, you know, M still equals FA, right? Yeah, that's right. Matt, no, wait. That's F equals MA. My bad. My bad. Force is mass times acceleration. Well, when you have two guys with fairly equal mass, then acceleration makes all the difference. I think Nagano is certainly the faster of the two. So I think he goes in there, and I think he hits Overeem late in the first round, and he finishes him by TKO. So there's that. And whether or not that gives him a title shot, eh, we'll see. But should be a little entertaining barn burner while it lasts. All right, Henry Cejudo taking on Sergio Pettis. And in that last fight that uh, Henry was in a couple of months back, he just looked like a death machine. I mean, he looked like he was a striking killer Olympic wrestler dude. So uh, Sergio, he's got his work cut out for him. Uh, that was one of the most like dominant performances I've seen in a long time. Uh, just outclassing a dude. Um, See, so yeah, look at the stats real quick here. Nothing, well, the reach of for Sergio is pretty big. Strikes landed per minute. Look, it's favoring Henry. Takedowns favoring Henry. Uh, yeah, Henry Sejudo should win this fight. I think it's his to lose. Then he goes in there and he uh, does a little bit of wrestling, but keeps it mostly striking oriented for the first round. Then I think in the second round, that's when he uh, turns on the Jets and he beats Sergio by second round. TKO. So a lot of ground and pound finishes I'm predicting for this card. If you like that, and you should, probably enjoy it. All right, Eddie Alvarez taking on Justin Gaethje. Oh, this should be fun, fun, fun. 
because uh, both of these guys like to trade and bang. Of course, Justin had that five-year contender earlier this year. Uh, and Eddie Alvarez still reeling from uh, getting knocked out by Conor McGregor last November. Um, we can look at the stats. We can go down and say, hey, look, you know, here's how they fare with significant strikes. But I'm just going to go about what I've seen so far. Uh, Justin Gates is a dude that can eat a lot of punches. He's really hard to bring down. I think he's a little bit faster than Alvarez. I think he's going to hit a little bit sooner. He's got a better uh, reach advantage, a little bit better range. So I think it's going to take him a while. I think it's going to be one of things where he just knocks his lights out, you know, in like 20 seconds. I think it's going to be a, a grinder. I think Justin Gates goes in there and he wins by a late, late third round TKO stoppage. I'm talking like the last like two or final minute of the fight. It's going to take a while to grind him down, but I think he will be successful and Gates walks away with another exciting victory. This should be the fight of the night. If it's not, then we all, you know, should get a refund. All right, Tisha Torres taking on Michelle Waterson. Uh, nothing really jumping out at me as far as the metrics here. That should be a huge decisive variable. I just think Torres, just a better striker, but Waterson, obviously the better grappler, the better submission. So it's that old chestnut, you know, when you have the, the really good striker with kind of subpar wrestling taking on the really, really good wrestler with kind of ho-hum striking. What do you go with? Well, nine times out of ten, I'm going to go with the wrestler. So I think Watterson goes in there. She eats some punches early, but she hangs on there, and I think she wins a grueling third-round unanimous decision victory. So not really the, the optimal way to start the show, but maybe say what we can get. All right, and very, very quickly... We're going to run down the uh, prelims and then the five pass fights. Not that anybody really cares, because let's face it, we really don't. Charles Oliveira taking on Paul Felder. Just looking at the stats here, I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Paul Felder by decision, unanimous. Uh, then we got Alex Oliveira. A lot of Oliveira's fighting taking on Yancey Medeiros. Taking out the stats here, I'm going to go with Medeiros by second round TKO. David Taymor taking on Drocker Close, or is it Close, or Kloss? I like how he has a little the mitt on there, so you know what state he's from? That's right, it's Wisconsin. Um, yeah, David Taymor's a pretty good fighter. Don't really know a lot about Drakkar. Um, but I'm going to go with Taymor by late third round stoppage. Uh, Phyllis Herrig taking on Courtney Casey. Of course, Phyllis Herrig had the, the match against Justin Keish. It is Justin Keish, right? Justine Keish, my bad, where she pooped all over herself. Uh, Courtney Casey's nickname is Cast Iron. Man, that's naming yourself after kitchen appliances. It's just the worst. Uh, look at the stats here. Looks like Courtney is the better striker, but Felix Felice is the better wrestler. Uh, if I had to go one, I'm going to go with Felice. I think she wins by a split decision. Unanim not a unanimous, but split decision victory. Amanda Cooper taking on Angela McGonna, ABC versus Your Majesty. Man, they need help with these marketing names. Um, I'm going to go with Cooper to win by unanimous decision. We got Sabah Hamasi taking on Abdul Razik Al Hazan, which, you know, don't want to sound like I'm a guy who's really, you know, going out there and making assumptions about people, but this is a rare example, I believe, of Muslim on Muslim violence in the UFC. You don't get a whole lot of those. Uh, Abdul is 7-1. and one. I think he goes in there and I think he wins by second round knockout. This dude is bad. Not that Sabah Hamasi isn't bad, isn't, you know, a, a good fighter. It's just think Abdul is really going to be a force to be reckoned with a welterweight in like two or three years. Very, very talented guy. I'm impressed by his uh, work earlier. Uh, for a, wow, this has got to be like a huge, huge weight discrepancy. Uh, Jeremy Kimball's Grizzly looks like he weighs like 230 pounds, taking on Dominic Reyes. He looks like he weighs about, I don't know, uh, 85 pounds, soaking wet with bricks in his pockets. Uh, this is being fought at 205 pounds, but Jesus Christ, that is a huge size discrepancy. Like, that's got to be like a 50, 60 something pound weight differential based on the pictures. Um, so, yeah, look at their stats. Uh, Dominic Reyes is 7 0, Kimball 15 and 6. Um, yeah, all you really got to know about this, this is probably the most absurd set I've ever seen in my life. 
Uh, Jeremy Kimmel landing 5.79 significant strikes per fight, which is really a lot. That is way, way, way above average for the UFC. But let's look at Dominic Race. His is 26.9 per minute. That is like RoboCop stats. Like, you have to be fighting like a dude who's asleep to land that many punches per minute. So, yeah, just by that alone, I'm going to go with Dominic Reyes to win by a grueling late third-round TKO stoppage. That one, this looks like it's going to be a fight to go out of your way to see. So, find a way to catch that one if you're not watching on the Facebook fights. And our curtain jerker, it's a heavyweight fight. We've got Justin Willis, big pretty, looking like a... Well, he, well, you know what he looks like. Taking on Alan Crowder, who's in black and white, so he's from Pleasantville. You don't see a lot of guys fighting out of there. That's it's finally making its way. Uh, some inroads there. All right, so uh, Willis is five and one. Crowder is nine and two. The stats pretty similar. Looks like uh, Willis is having a little bit better for the takedowns. I hate to say it, but this Willis guy doesn't look like he's in shape. He looks more like a. He's the kind of guy who does bench presses with hoagies and submarine sandwiches in his hand. But Crowder, don't really know a whole lot about him. We even have like a recent photograph. So this one's kind of a toss and you know, throw it up in the air. I think it's 50-50 based on the very, very scant information of both these fighters. So I want to say uh, Justin Willis wins by split decision just because why not? All right, well, those are my picks for UFC 218. Feel free to use them. Do whatever you want with them. Looks like it should be a... A better than average card considering the main event. I also about the prelims, but pretty good way to start the month of December off. I'm looking forward to it, and guess I'll be seeing you in the next show. Guess, guess I will.